uh, in LaTeX, uh, you can divide your document into sections, uh, as I did here. And since it's uh, commonly used by mathematicians, uh, there's also, there are also packages to uh, define this theorem-like environment. And the one I use is uh, the AMSTHM, which is American Mathematical Society Theorem package. And you just have to include it in views package, and then you can use this new theorem command. Now, uh, sections, theorems, and also other things are numbers that uh, grow incrementally. So each time you have a new theorem, you can add it, uh, it number increase. And how, how do you do it? How, how do you tell LaTeX that you want theorems to be numbered and maybe you want you know, propositions to be numbered uh, the same way as, uh, as theorems, like following them, but maybe you want definitions to be numbered in a different, like separately, and remarks should not be numbered or something like that. Well, let's see what I did here. Uh, first, I defined a definition, a definition environment, which I'm using here, for example. Uh, you see, you see it here. It's a bit cramped, but I wanted to fit it in one, one page. Um, where is it? Yeah, it's here. So by default, if I don't specify anything, um, Lata creates a new counter, and each successive definition is going to to have a number growing up from one, independently of where it is in the document. Like, it, it this is in section two, but it's still called definition one, and it's after proposition one point two, but it doesn't follow the same numbering. If I want, for example, theorems to follow uh, the numbering of a section, so being the format sections, section dot theorem number, uh, I have to specify the section after the, uh, the uh, at the end of a new theorem command. And on the other hand, if I want uh, another theorem-like environment, like proposition, to be numbered using the same counter, so not as a child counter, but using the same counter as THM, which I just defined, I have to put it in square brackets here between the two arguments of new theorem. So there are the two ways here, remember, uh, at the end, if I want theorem to be a child of section, and in the middle here, if I want proposition to be like a sibling of theorem. So you see in this case, theorem, the num theorem numbering starts with the number of a section. Well, here it's zero because introduction has no number. And here it's one because it's in the first section. Here it's two. And proposition uh, follows the numbering of theorem in the sense that uh, they share the same counter. Okay, uh, so, but you see that also sections have counters, and every time you define a theorem, you, you get a counter. So, but what are these counters? And there are many more uh, given by default in LaTeX. For example, each page is a counter. Uh, if you write like uh, an equation, uh, let me actually let's let's do it here. So if you write an equation, a numbered equation with say a line, you got the star. Um, you let's say I don't know a plus b equals c. You get here, you get a number, and this is also a counter. Let me actually zoom out, otherwise it gets complicated. Okay, uh, but what are counters? Counters are uh, a combination of two things. The first thing is an actual number which increases in, in some way. Uh, this is an integer variable if you want to call it like that, if you have a computer science background. Uh, so it's just uh, a value in which is under the hood. And then associated with which counter there is a command. We start with uh, v, like the, like v, for example, vthm is the, num uh, the command which is defined automatically by LaTeX every time you have a counter, which tells you, uh, which displays this counter in, in a way defined. That in this case, it's 2.2 as it was 2.2 here. Remember the proposition has, has the same number that as theorem. Share, they share the same THM counter. Um, yeah, so you can, for example, manipulate a counter by saying, I want to increase it. Uh, by using, or you can set it manually, set counter, you can set the THM counter to, I don't know, 23. And now let's, let's write something here. And let's actually copy this sentence, just one line above the set counter. And I am setting it, see, so you know, the theorem counter has value two at this point, even though I print it as section, n section counter dot theorem counter, 
the actual value of the counter theorem is just the, the second two that you see here. And now I set it to 23, so the first number, first number two here is the section number, it remains the same, and I set it to, I set manually the theorem counter to 23. So you can actually manipulate them. This can be useful, for example, if you have, I don't know, if you're writing a homework and the homework says, okay, solve exercise 3, 7, and 25 from this page, and you want to, to type them and to print the correct numbers, but still without typing out by hand 3, 7, and 25 or something. Um, yeah, so you can um, you can display the, the the full display value of a of a counter in this way. Uh, there's actually uh, you can also actually if you want just display the number as I said here the value of the counter theorem is just two and I'm setting it to 23. If I want to display it without the uh, the section number, I can do it by hand uh, by using uh, there's a few different commands, so like five or six of them. Uh, one of them is Arabic, which uh, has nothing to do with uh, Arabic writing, is with Arabic number system. So if I write, if I print Arabic THM, it has a value of 23 because the Arabic numbering system is the one we use. I can use the Roman numbering system, both lowercase with a lowercase r or uppercase with an uppercase r. And I can use the alphabet, the Latin alphabet. Uh, yeah, letter W should be the 23rd letter of the alphabet. Of course, for a value higher than 26, uh, you're going to get an error or something. It's not going to work for the alphabet. And yeah, you have an uppercase alphabet as well. And there's a last one is like one used for footnotes is like FN symbol, uh, but now it's of it's for sure going to give an error because you can only use it up to like nine or something. So you can put it here. Uh, you have this dagger symbol. So the FN symbol is going to be like asterisk, uh, dagger, double dagger, some symbols that are sometimes used in footnotes. Uh, okay, but uh, why would you want to print this? Well, uh, one reason to print it, uh, to print the number of a like the value of a counter without using the, the THM is if you actually want to redefine this the counter command. Let me show you. So let's say now sections are displayed like this, but I want uh, I want them to appear with a, like a weird S, which is sometimes used for sections. So this symbol here, you know, this weird symbol that sometimes uh, denotes sections in books. And I want all sections to appear with this symbol because I don't know. Uh, yeah, because that's a typewriting thing. Um, the way I do it is by redefining the command the section, which tells LaTeX how to display the section number. And I redefine it, and I want, I said I want it to be S, followed by, I don't know, just a space maybe? And then the actual numeric, Arabic numeric value for the section. Uh, notice that I have to do this at the beginning, like before, in the preamble, before the begin document, otherwise uh, I think it doesn't count. And now you see that all sections have this weird S as a number. Uh, the space actually doesn't work, but I think there's a way to, to put it, I, just, I, I don't care. Um, now you see one thing, uh, theorems and proposition now, theorems and propositions now also get this number because, well, probably uh, if I had to guess, it's because the the theorem command, we redefine the, the section command, and the theorem command, the the theorem command, the, the theorem, well, it's it's defined based on the section command. So if we change the section command, uh, as a consequence, we also, the, the theorem command also changes. So let's say we, uh, we don't want this to appear for theorems, and we actually, so we need to redefine, with renew command, we need to redefine the, the uh, the THM, is it what I called it? Yeah. And we wanted to print, uh, say, as it was before, like we want the Arabic value for the section, uh, let's say dash instead of dot, and then the Arabic value for uh, the theorem. And now you see the theorems and propositions are numbered like this. Uh, now, this is a bit of an ish thing because you usually don't want to do it, but there's one application which is very useful, I think, is that in this case, you see the equation here as number one. 
and the equation numbering is already defined. You cannot, you're not defining like you do with the theorem, which you define. I want theorems to follow sections, so you more or less get what you want. The, the equations are like this by default. You can actually, um, yeah, you can actually change how it is displayed uh, with something like this new command the equation and then let's say we do um let's say we use the, the section command and then dot uh arabic for equation actually let's change arabic let's change it to alt and now you see that the equation is numbered as um yeah, but this weird symbol, because we used the section which was defined as using the weird symbol, dot um, equation. Now, there is one problem with this, is that equation still does not follow section, right? I just defined how it is printed, but one key characteristic of the theorem following the section for numbering is that, uh, you see here I have theorem 1, 1, proposition 1, 2, remember proposition is using the same counter as theorem. And now I start another section and I start again from theorem 2.1. It's not theorem 2.3 as it should be. Uh, the theorem counter reset when you enter the section. Uh, and if you do this with vacation like this, uh, this is not enough. Like there's nothing that tells equation to, that should, uh, that tells it to reset every time you enter a new section. In fact, if we, uh, let's say we copy this equation actually, and we copy it, in the previous section, now we should have two equations which are actually the same. This is uh, two, uh, no, sorry, I'm in the same section. Let's say here in section one. You see here what I mean? We are in section one, so this equation is going to be printed as section dot uh, first letter of the alphabet, but then this equation is the second equation, even though it should be the first equation in the second section. You, you, you see what I mean? Um, so how do we do this? Well, we have to tell LaTeX that we want equations to be numbered within sections, just as theorems are numbered uh, within, um, yeah, within sections. So I, I need to use the command number within, long story short. And I had to tell that equation, I want it numbered uh, within section. And now this should work, I think. Yeah, you see, 1.1. Uh, yeah, I actually have to, uh, sorry, let me see, let me tell you. So it's 1.1 and then 2.1 because we can't reset. Now it doesn't use the definition I gave anymore. Why does it? Because I use, well, when I, when I say number within equation section, it tells LaTeX that equations would follow section in the sense that it resets every time, but it also tells it that it should display a different, uh, numbering. So if I actually. I actually need to put this renew command after the number within command, and now it actually works. Um, okay, so that, that this was a bit technical, but what is the point of numbering, of counters, of all of this? Well, the point is that you can uh, reference, uh, you can use these numbers to refer to a specific section or a specific theorem in your document. For example, let's say this is theorem 0-1, and you can do so with a label and ref command. So I need to put a label on this theorem and you shouldn't call it just theorem one because then it changes place. So if you write another theorem before it or something like that. Uh, so let's call it THM counter zero. And then if I want to refer it somewhere else in the document, let's say here at the end, uh, like the first theorem I wrote. Uh, actually, let's write something like something different. Um, theorem, and then I use the ref command. And what did I call it? Uh, I don't remember the name. THM counter zero. Oh yeah, actually, uh, TechMaker suggests uh, the correct name because it says them. Uh, was interesting, or something like that. Now, when you do this, you actually have to compile twice. It's a little problem with LaTeX, but first, well, just compile twice, whatever. Uh, and you get this with the correct number. So you see here, I didn't write manually 0-1. I just wrote 
a label of a corresponding theorem. And the point is that if I add something before this theorem, like another theorem, another theorem before the first one, oops, what happens is, well, the numbering is going to change, and now I still have to compile twice, and this number changes accordingly. So this is very, very useful if you write a document. Uh, you're not always going to write it linearly. You know, sometimes you forget something and you need to add something before. So the numbering of your whole document is going to change. So this is a very, very nice way to uh, put the correct numbering for different things. So you cannot just refer to numbering to theorems, sorry but also two sections, for example. So here, for example, uh, this is actually a subsection. I can use another label, uh, the subsection, or something like that. These are just fantasy names. I can, you can use whatever name you want. And uh, yeah, I can say the sentence here. We are still in subsection ref uh, subsection. And now again, compile twice, and you get we are in subsection uh, 2.1. Okay, so, and you see if I add the subsection here, for example, here, subsection, this is going to be called 2.2. Uh, uh, now, just a little trick uh, if you include the hyperref package, uh, now you have to compile twice because at first it's going to give an error. Uh, and now all your refs become clickable links. So now, for example, if I click on this 0 2, it's going to bring me to the point of the document where uh, the 0 2 thing exists. Uh, now, with only one page, it's not very useful, but if you write longer documents, just keep in mind you include this hyperref package and uh, everything is done automatically for you. Now, another thing that uses counter is the enumerate environment. And for example, here the first item is going to be numbered as one, and this one is part of a counter. And if I add, you see, if I add one below, it's going to be two because it follows the same counter. And I can, for example, label them, and I can then later reference the items on a counter in the same way as you do for theorems. And again, I have to compile twice. Um, and you can do the same with um, sub items are going to have um, a sub counter, um, which uh, it's a sub counter because it resets. Uh, oops, sorry. What do you do? Because it resets for every item. You see, here I have one a, and here I have two a. It only displays the a by choice. And if you want, you can treat them as counters and you can redefine how this thing here is displayed, for example. Uh, and the default name for these counters is enum i and m enum i i for like the Roman numbers. So I can do as I did before, I can rename the, the enum i command as, for example, if I want uh, to use I don't know, the capital alphabet letters, as we did before. If you do this, you see this is going to change, but uh, it's, it's not. you don't have complete control over it, because for example, the dot here remains. Let me, let me zoom in. You see that this, this dot, I didn't write it here, but it's still there. It's somehow uh, coded in the enumerate package. And it's even more clear if you do it for the enum I, I, which is the first degree sub, well, the second degree uh, inner enumerate, whatever you want to call it. Let's say we don't want brackets and we instead want to number them as, I don't know, uh, Roman numerals with a dot followed by a dot. Now, it works, but still it brings the, the, this, this part, uh, round parenthesis that uh, were there before, uh, they are still there. How can you remove them? Uh, well, the way to do it is don't bother with this uh, renew command here. 
actually let's just uh, let's comment them you can do it by including the well let me put it here just the enum item package and then you do something here what you do is you give the optional argument specifying that you want a label you want it to be something now see we said we want to be uh, round parentheses around the capital uh, capital alphabet so we do it like this and instead of writing the name of the counter because we are uh, we don't need to write it we just write uh, star and if we do this we're going to get the uh, oh actually I did it for the sub enumerate sorry I want to do it for the outer one but you get what I mean here and you see that we get exactly what we want without the dot so this is the correct way to do it uh, for enumerates without the uh, using, yeah, you have to use the enum item package. Uh, in LaTeX, you can also define your own counters. Um, so let's say this is a, the first two paragraphs of a book, and let's say we want to turn it into a religious book, and want so the kind of books that you refer to a specific sentence in the book by saying, uh, I don't know, like John 7:25 for the 25th sentence in the seventh chapter of John's Gospel, something like that. Um, so the way you define a new counter is with the new counter command and you simply say let's call it sentence we want to number sentences and as you do for when you use the new theorem command you can specify uh, an optional uh, parent uh, counter uh, for example let's say we want uh, um, sentences to be numbered under section so that every time I start a new section the, the, the sentence counter resets as well and how do we actually print a value for a sentence? Well, uh, we saw it before. We can, you can use, for example, the Arabic. And there's also an associated, uh, well, it's, we can use Arabic, for example. And now the value is zero. And now do you, you change this value? Well, you can use, well, there's two commands, the set counter command. You can, use, you can set the sentence to whatever counter you want, for example, 10. Now you see 10, and you can use the uh, add to counter command to add, for example, 5, and you get 10 plus 5, 15. Uh, and now, well, the whole point of this is to use the label and reference system. So you would like to write something like label here, let's call it, I don't know, x, and then at the end, uh, let me write some space here. And then you add uh, ref, you ref to x, and now you need to compile twice. But now you see it says 1, it doesn't say 15. Uh, why is this? Well, think about it. How does Lack know that you want to refer to the sentence? You just t told it to print it here. It doesn't know, how does it know what, and, and for what matters, how does it know in each point of a text what each label refers to? Well, the trick is that there is a command called the ref step counter, let's actually use it here, which is hidden inside every section, uh, equation, uh, whatever, and also every, inside every theorem definition, there's a, a, a hidden ref step counter command, which does exactly this. It increases the counter you give it uh, by one, and it tells LaTeX that at this point, if a label command appears, then that label has to refer to uh, this counter is specified. Now we have to compile twice, and now you see here 16, because I'm referring to uh, the 16th, well, the, the counter is set to 16 now, 15 plus 1 incremented by this. Uh, now, actually, we said we want to uh, to display this 16 as, like, I don't know, uh, square brackets, uh, sentence, uh, section number, comma, sentence number. And to do this, well, to do to have this displayed every time we use ref, we can use we can redefine as we saw before uh, the the uh, sentence command. Uh, notice that this command is defined automatically as soon as you define a new counter. So we are redefining it now. But you don't have to define it the first time. If you just if you're good with the default, you don't need to redefine it. But now we want to change the appearance. So we want it to be, for example. Uh, use this section, so print out section in whatever way is the default and whatever way we choose. For example, if you want to use 
letters instead of numbers, we can redefine the, the section separately. And then comma, and let's say we want to use an Arabic value for the sentence, uh, and close square brackets. Now if you do this, and you do it twice, as usual, and here you get 1 comma 16. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, let's actually remove all this stuff here. And let's say if it, for each sentence, we want it to we want that automatically to um, start with uh, ref step counter command, and we also want let's say to print the number of the sentence that we ought to before the actual sentence starts. So we can do something like this, for example. You see, if you, if you just tell it to use Arabic uh, to print the Arabic numeral for the sentence, um, it doesn't print the full the sentence command. It just prints the Arabic numeral for that number, which is one now. And yeah, so I would have to copy this this part here at least for every sentence, like copy paste it. And then uh, this is not the best way to do it because if at some point, for example, I want to change from Arabic to using uh, Roman numerals or something, uh, then I would have to change it in every place. So we can define a command, right? We, we saw it uh, previously, on, or maybe on another video. I don't know if I'm merging the two videos or making them separately. Anyway, we can we can use a new command, and let's call it sent, which has which is going to have one argument, uh, which is the actual sentence. So what should this command do? Well, it should use increment the, the counter for the sentence, it should print out the number of the sentence, maybe followed by, I don't know, a colon, and then we want it to actually print the sentence we write. Now in this way, uh, we can just use, like, remove this here, um, then we can use the send command, so I suggest that any label that you use, maybe there are ways to put it automatically here and have it use a different name every time, but I suggest you do not do it because the whole point of labels is that you put them manually where you need them and you give it a manual name, a custom name that which actually uh, gives you an idea of what the sentence contains. So having it done automatically it kind of defeats the purpose of using uh, of using the label and reference system. So I would say you just keep, leave it there and do not include it in the new command thing. So if we do it like this, uh, now you see that, uh, well, yeah, so we have the first sentence preceded by one column, and then again the second sentence preceded by two columns, and let's say here we actually add some space, because otherwise, no, well, now you don't see it because it's breaking a new line, but anyway. Uh, if I do it like this, maybe you see it. Yeah, I added some space and now it also two is a new space. And here I should remove a space here. Okay, and we do like this for every sentence. And now we have a nice sentence command. Now you can write the new gospel if you want, or the new guide to the galaxy. Uh, let me just do it every time so we can test that the reference system actually works. And here, and then here, just a second, almost done, okay, now all our sentences are numbered and you see that the number for a sentence follows the section, so here it starts again with one, now we get up to three and then it starts again, and yeah, for example, if we think that this sentence here is particularly interesting, we can give it a label now, and call it uh, work. And now if we refer to work, a nice sentence you can find in ref work and compile twice, twice, two five, is it actually actually the two five? Yeah, five, it worked, and two five, the second section fifth sentence. Uh, let, just, let's just review why this works, because here I put label here and it's not clear if you write it like this it's not clear where we uh, what this label refers to right so what logic does with commands is just a macro so it expands this text here so it's going to write ref step counter write the number 
And then it writes the argument, which starts with label. So label appears right after this ref step counter here. So it's going to refer to this. So it's just a double check that it works because it's correct, not by, by chance. And uh, actually, this is maybe a bit nasty. So the last thing we want to do is maybe to put these numbers instead of before a sentence. We want to put them um, as a superscript at the end of, of the sentence itself. So we do something like this. Uh, we leave some space here. Uh, what do we do? We need to use the text uh, superscript command. And inside here, we can put this Arabic sentence, which is the number. And I think we need to leave some space at some point. Otherwise, our, they are all going to be clashed together. So let me see. OK, this looks nice, right? It looks like a gospel to me. So yeah. This is how you define your own counter to count things that maybe are not uh, already counted inside LaTeX.